So I started making leather items when I was a teenager or even before then. Um, so I've probably been around 10. Um, my dad taught me how to make all the basic equipment for the birds of prey and then it just went from there really. Um, so dad had shown me how to make those bits and then as I got my own birds um, I'd make more and more complex pieces. The workshops in Grantham, Lincolnshire and I started making leather goods in 2009. I was working another job flying birds of prey for a living and I started by making all my own equipment for my own birds and then over time people started wanting that equipment and then it just grew more and more from that point really. Before I started leather work full time I was travelling in Canada and well working in Canada. Um, so that sort of influences some of the designs of um, the bags and that sort of thing that we make. Um, just the outdoor, the rugged outdoor theme um, because I was hunting out there, hiking in the Rockies, dog sledding, um, all that kind of thing. I've got two dogs that come to work with me every day. Uh, two Rhodesian Ridgebacks, Kofi and Suki. Kofi's 10 now and Suki's 11 months old. Um, yeah, so Kofi's been with me pretty much from the start. Um, he's a bit more tired now of <laughs> sewing. Um, Suki, she's young and interested in everything still but so I've, I've taught my wife how to sew so in the early days she'd help me sew on the machines um, and then my daughters are taking an interest now they're three and six so I take them bits of leather home and different colored threads and I put holes in the leather and then they sort of follow the holes um, yeah so so they're developing an interest I didn't I didn't really enjoy school. Um, I was more, I was never really interested in what was going on there. My mind was always back home because we always used to have lots of animals when I was younger. Um, birds of prey, I had chickens, ferrets, dogs, rabbits. Um, so I was always thinking about what was going on back home. So it was always difficult to get me um, to concentrate in class because. Um, I had bigger things on my mind um, and yeah I just didn't really fit in at school. Um, there was one teacher his name was Mr Pratt and he was absolutely brilliant. Um, he was a woodworking teacher and he'd always you know give up his lunch breaks to get you on the lathe or bandsaw. Um, yeah he was a really good teacher um, but other than that there wasn't really much I enjoyed at school. So this is this is the heat press, and this so this is what we put the the gold logos, well gold or silver, whatever colour really, um, or no foil. So sometimes we'll just press straight into leather. Um, so we have like our logo in different sizes, and then different companies that we make things for. Um, that was for the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. So we make bits for them and then there that's for placing Qatar. So yeah, and then just letters, so we just do normal letters. So they're just on there. And then this heats up and then we use the gold foil over. and it will just emboss. This is a Falconry bag, one of our Falconry bags that we make. Um, this is based on my dad's Falconry bag from when I was a child. So he, he had a bag that was canvas, which were very similar. Um, so when I started doing this, I I made, made the pattern off of it um, and then just sort of adapted it. So these are the gloves we make. So these are a falconry glove 
um, and we make those for a motorbike company as well so the so the motorbike company have them sewn up so that they go on like that but then falconry you'd have them sewn up to there and then that would be open um, with an eyelet in the edge for tying the bird to um, that was um, so the, f the first bag I made there was sort of three versions of it really I did the first bag that I ever made which I won't show you <laughs> and then the second bag I ever made was this one so that's the second bag I ever made um, and then I sort of adapted and improved the design so this this one will sew an inch of leather um, I've never caught my finger in it but I've been right on the edge like that where it's it's popped my finger out before but it's never sewn through my finger you've got to be careful with that one we'll go over to this machine now this is this one here is the press so this is 20 ton press that um, we press a lot of leather components out of it gets loud so these are the knives that we have made where I send away the CAD pattern so this one's for our gloves and then we will go over it out a perfect little piece and every single one of those will be the same and then we'll take that over to the heat press and then put our logo on it I enjoy making things with my hands and you've just got something physical at the end of the day that you can just well you've just got you've just got an object there and hopefully that is going to outlast you um, and it's the same with um, like these kinds of things you know you've got someone made this tool um, a long long time ago but it's still going now um, I want to make things like that that outlast me um, yeah I think that's I think that's really special that you know something that lasts you know we live in a world today that um, we're just taught to buy more and more and more but if you've got something that that is well made it'll last for such a long time um, and I just want to create those kinds of things um, and that's a good example really that's probably over a hundred years old that is and this company um, Joseph Dixon they they used to make all my knives for me and the company broke down it was two brothers and they fell out and the company just dissolved um, but yeah that that was there I think it was their dad Joseph Dixon I might be wrong there or their granddad it would have been but yeah these are anklets for the birds the birds of prey uh, so we make all the furniture for the birds um, we've got these are some prototype wallets we're making card holders and there's a large one and a small one and then we make things like belts um, so this is a bridal leather belt things things like that 
obstacles really were skills really because there's nobody able to teach you these kinds of things I'm sure there are people out there but there's there's not many around nowadays and it's such a close guarded um, industry really people don't really want to share the skills because if they do share the skills they might be putting themselves out of business um, so that was one of the main obstacles really um, so a lot of my work was done through trial and error um, so that yeah that was that was perhaps the biggest obstacle really skills so so this is there's a buzzard there this is this is where i used to come when i was younger and i used to do all the hunting on there yeah like this is this is the kind of countryside that you know i grew up in this is why i didn't really like school because i was always more interested in this um this is just this is where it was for me you know um i wasn't interested in what was going on at school um so then this led to me making things for my birds of prey um, which then has led now to you know making leather goods and bags that sort of thing um, so you can just see how it just progresses um, you go from being outdoors to flying birds of prey to needing to make their equipment um, and then enjoying making the equipment to then starting a business and it's just a natural progression really um, yeah it's quite an interesting journey when you put it like that <laughs> Ooh. Suki, come. Come on, him. Suki, come. 